I just, I think I undervalued, uh, this, which is horrible to say, but it's, for somebody that's been marking their whole life, but it's true. I think I undervalued the words that were used on pages and I overvalued the aesthetics. And now what I always say is design builds trust, but words are what sell. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're both important. Like you have to have good design, but the words might be more important. Um, I mean, and I think there, there's tons of examples out there of this too, even in like the direct sale world of something like, um, you know, like a Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels, people out there, if you're not familiar with them, they basically create a platform where you can um, take someone through a funnel to sell them. And to be honest, most of those pages are not very attractive. They, they aren't aesthetically amazing, but the words convince people to take action and they disturb uh, enough to make people realize that their problem is serious enough that they have to take action. I think that's what StoryBrand's done for me is it's, it's just kind of put it all together. One of the things my uncle taught me a while back that I thought has been really impactful around understanding where prospects are in a sales funnel. This could not be more important than it is right now because the season of, you know, business growth is going to be hard over the next year or two. And there's, you're going to have to be more intentional. You have to be, um, you have to have a better plan than you did before. So there's, there's three kinds of prospects. Um, there's the prospect who doesn't know that they have a problem. They might have a problem, but they don't know that it's a problem. And then there's the prospect who knows they have a problem, but they're not sufficiently disturbed about it to take action. And the third is the prospect who knows they have a problem and they're sufficiently disturbed about it to take action. Now that, that term sufficiently disturbed kind of rubs some people the wrong way because it kind of feels like, like I'm trying to convince them of something that they shouldn't do. But what I always tell people is um, good persuasion in sales is not bad. If I'm trying to convince you to buy something or to do something that is in your best interest, I'm almost morally obligated to sell you on it and to persuade you. Now, manipulation is different. Manipulation is when, you know, you're trying to convince somebody to do something they shouldn't do. And this is where sales gets a bad rap over time. And I think our work that, that you and I do, Steve, in marketing, just so tightly knits together with sales. I think in the, in the old world of things, people have thought of like marketing is this team over here and sales is this team over there. And I think in the new world, especially this new economy that we're going to be heading into, it's never going to be more important for those two things to be interlocked. And having a consistent message on the bottom, story brand, which is what you're talking about, is, is kind of the foundation of the building upon which everything else is built. Totally. You know, in my book, I talk about the disconnect of sales. And the thing about story brand is one of the epiphanies for me was that the messaging, you, there's a couple of things you said there, the, the words support the design. Hmm. Well, the design is a way that we feel. It's a, it's a way that we read and we use our eyes, but we get a feeling from this. And we have this part of the brain called the brainstem, and I call it, it's the bodyguard. But this bodyguard doesn't speak. It just stands there and protects you and keeps you safe. And if it sees danger, it takes you out of that situation. But that bodyguard, part of your brain, does not process language, mm. does not read. It goes by feeling, but no decision that you make happens until the bodyguard signs off on it. Then the logical part of your brain takes over and justifies that. And so the design is resonating with that bodyguard and the text is the way the logical confirmation process. So it's a, a one-two complementary process but it's about feeling safe mm -hmm. and when you you wrap that into the sales part of things I mean, think of the times that you were attracted to you sat and evaluated a potential solution or product or service for what you were needing and you liked it and you came closer you started talking to them you come in you maybe even went there to get the final pieces handled where you sign the paperwork or whatever, but something happened in that sales process that offended you that mm -hmm. didn't feel the same as before. And you walked out of there and you were really upset and you just 
you were you walked out of there you would invested all this time but you left and it was because of that sales process that you're alluding to that wasn't congruent with the rest of the marketing message yeah i think you know one of the things i was just thinking about as you were talking about that is that if um if the feelings are wrong or even if even if fear kind of inflicts with those feelings if the feelings are wrong the facts don't matter mm -hmm. and <clears throat> i think that happens a lot in the sales process and especially when there's lack of uh consistency between you know what what the marketing messages is out here what the internal sales messages in here i actually had a guy on my podcast not that long ago i think it was the most recent episode that just got launched actually and he was talking about internal marketing and i never really thought about that term but especially with a larger company it, it's one thing when you got five or ten people but when you start to get to you know 30 40 50 100 200 people the message internally is almost as important as the message externally because like you said as soon as a customer encounters something that's not congruent with what they expected in their experience mm -hmm. the likelihood of them then closing and buying something becomes exponentially more difficult 